The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rose. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 6th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. For that, send that off to steve at tfn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mix back out there. The mix goes like this. You've got the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ trading higher, 49, 10, and 62 points. To the downside, the Russell, the semis, and the trannies, 17, 11, and 122 points to the downside there. Gold is off 10 bucks. Silver is down 12 cents. Light sweet crude is up a buck 04. Natural gas is down 22 cents. 30 year treasury printed out at 112.28. That is back nearly one full point. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got Carbon Revolution up 134 bucks for it. That must be an IPO. Booking Holdings up 109 bucks, 4%. Blue Green Vacations up 37. 105, maybe another IPO there. Eli Lilly is up 23 bucks. To the downside, no IPO. Mercado Libre off 22 bucks. Uh, you've got Crystal Biotech down 15 or 13 percent. You've got United Rentals down 11 bucks to an app percent. Moon Lake Immunotherapies 21 percent to the downside, 11 points. And Pool Corp down about seven bucks. That's a two percent move. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin. Where do we want to begin? Let's begin. Let's begin here. We talked about this on Friday uh, just for a tab. We talked about the um, we talked about the. Uh, Advanced client oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. Its closing price on Friday was up at 274 buckaroonies. The last time we saw that type of a high was all the way back here in January of 2022. For the, uh, um, I'm sorry, January of 2023 uh, is when we saw that last. Uh, we saw that last reading right here it was January the 12th. Now we talked about this on Friday, and it was at the end of the show. And I said, "Here's how I believe that the next market top is going to be formed, and that's when you get up above this level. First, when you get up above plus 150, that's the first indication that the market is in an overbought condition. That also says, hey, you start looking at those intraday charts, looking for some kind of turning signals, and then key levels of support failing." What this is suggesting here is we should see, if you take a look at going back to uh, 2022, uh, we're looking at those green diagonal moves higher at the tops with an advanced decline lower tops indicator. And that's likely what we're going to have out here. So, um, And then we will go ahead or should go ahead and form that top. Now, the interesting thing, if we do that, so we know the pattern of the past. Is it a guarantee that this is the pattern of the future? This is the next pattern. No, there's no guarantee. But, boy, we've got a high degree of probability with regard to how the New York Stock Exchange makes its tops here. And this is suggesting that we should still see higher price if we are going to get that divergent pattern out there. And then if we take a look at so when might that occur? 
you know, for that, we can go over to our seasonal charts here. This is a seasonal chart, not for the New York Stock Exchange, but for the S&P 500 and for the last 95 years. Now, this is a seasonal chart. This is not a pre-election year chart. This is just simply the 95-year cycle out here. Now, on this 95-year cycle, what this shows us is that we should get a top sometime around November 11th. So today is November 6th. Maybe we've got a one-day, a two-day pullback. The markets move higher. No, we're not going to use these dates, per se, um, as, um, um, as absolutes. They're here to give us a feel and uh, for what the market typically does. And then it's up to us to identify the indicator that's going to help us to identify that top. So you can see we're in a little bit of a sideways-ish to choppy-ish area out here before the market is supposed to make a low into the third week of November, just before Thanksgiving. So this shows about November 21st. I think Thanksgiving this year is like the 23rd or something. And then a move higher basically into the end of the year out there. So this is all lining up. When I say this is all lining up, I'm referring to the way that the New York Stock Exchange makes its tops. What we can anticipate over about a 95-year period that we should see, even though we've had nice moves here, a move lower, then a move higher. And if that move higher sets up this divergent pattern here, where we've got price moving higher, but we've got lower highs in that advanced client oscillator out there, then what we've got to do is really pay attention to where the tops might form. So for that... Let's go take a look at what went on last week and what's going on this morning inside the equity future contracts out here. For that, we're going to go ahead and switch panels. We're going to go to my white panel screen out here, and we're going to see both the daily and the weekly time frames because this helps us to put it together as well. And when I say put together, right now I'm going to focus on the bottom row. And the bottom row is the weekly time frame for the ES, the NQ, the YM, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. What we have now is we have confirmed Gartley buy patterns by the D point patterns for their weekly time frame. Remember, for Stevie's way of belief and thinking out here is that a pattern in the case of the A to B equals CD pattern and in the case of the Rose Mintum indicator signal pattern, which I can guarantee you what I'm about to say is absolutely true. The way those patterns form tops and bottoms is with bullish or bearish reversal candles. Here, these are Gartley buy patterns, and they were confirmed with bull sash candles in the NQ, bull sash candle in the ES mini, inside the YM, inside the Dow, and inside the Russell 2000. Big moves out there. Now, here's the cool thing. Because they've got Gartley buy patterns, does that mean we're just all in? That was a major bottom, and we're going to go ahead higher into the end of the year. I'd say that's a possibility, but that hasn't proven itself to us. In order to prove itself to us that that is a likely outcome, what we need to see is we need to see price close above those green oscillator and change lines for the ES and the NQ. I don't have enough data and my white background charts here for the Dow to be able to put that line up. But we can see in the Russell 2000, that oscillator and change line is red. It's really the green ones that are most important to us. And that says if we see a close in the ES Mini about 4407, that's going to suggest a further move higher. Now, that further move higher might only be to 4432, which is the top of a new daily profile out there. But if you close above that, then we could be getting back to those highs out there. In the case of the NQ, its weekly resistance point is about 15,434 out there. And for the Russell 2000, it's 1778. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. So we get back from this break. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of requests that have come in. Of course, I'd love thousands more, but I could probably handle about 15 or 20. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, palm dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get to our first request out here. The first request coming in from Not a Trader. And I don't think that's really the case. And Not a Trader wants to take a look at Tesla. So we'll have the uh, Tesla charts up on our screen here momentarily. And we take a look at Tesla right now. What do we know about Tesla? We know that uh, Tesla is trading above, closed above, the top of its daily profile uh, on a Friday. And this morning's retracement or pullback has been a test and rejection of the top of the profile. What's the top of the profile? Top of the profile is where sellers are at and buyers have been able to overrun those folks. And that area of support, and this is the level that you'd be watching here first, not a trader, is going to be that top at 219.25. If price, for example, today were to close back inside there, then that would tell us that Friday's move was a false breakout, or at least a false breakout at this time. And then if price is back inside that profile, it should pull back to test 212.25. 12 or somewhere right around there, that's the current oscillator and change line. Now, in the case of Tesla, formed two different bottom patterns. One was the buy the D point. Uh, what I show here is the C to D leg. It also formed a wave number seven pattern, that is letter G. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart last week confirmed a Gartley buy pattern as well. Now, the type of bullish reversal candle that it is is what's referred to as a key reversal bar. A key reversal bar needs three things. There's three elements. Number one, the market must be in an extended condition. When you have an A to B equals C to the downside, you're looking at the D point having been met out there. That's an extended condition. So that's item number one. Number two, the prior bars high and low must be exceeded. And in fact, that's what took place last week. And then finally, close, the close of the instrument you're looking at has to at least be one tick, one pip, one penny in the opposite direction of the trend. In this case here, that more than accomplished that task. So much like we took a look at for the ES, the NQ, the YM, the Russell 2000, many of the cash indices out there for the weekly time frames, they've confirmed Gartley buy patterns out there. But the key is, it's not just that you confirm a buy pattern or a topping pattern. That's important. But then what's next important is where is support and resistance? And so here, we take a look at a weekly time frame chart for Tesla. If, it's, if Tesla is able to stay above, remain above the 219.25, we can see this big, huge gap to the downside. So we know it's going to be a rocky road out there. The volume on that gap to the downside was uh, 
170 million shares as an example on Friday as this was moving higher, 119 million shares. So it's going to be a bit rocky um, as price moves through this area. But price should be able to, as long as it holds above to a 1925, not a trader, it should be able to make a move to 232.35. And 232.35 is the bottom of its weekly profile out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Tesla. Now, Tesla had a move of four consecutive sessions to the upside. That means four consecutive higher closes to the upside out there. And so it's ready for a pullback or a retracement. And if it does, it should last, if this is a bull market for Tesla, it should last for maybe two sessions, maybe three sessions at the most out there, and then resume higher. But what you want to be paying attention to right now is the top of that daily profile because of the meaning that's contained there. And I would watch 219.25 on a 30-minute basis. If we see, you know, is a chance that it's going to go ahead and bust through that level. And maybe it's not the 30-minute that's got the uh, topping signal in it. Maybe it's a 65 or a 130 or 195. But as I take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart for Tesla, I've got nothing other than just sideways movement, price above profile out there. So, um, but it's below that oscillator change line. Just tells us doesn't have momentum at the, at least at this stage of the uh, morning out here. So, I hope that helps you out. Not a trader with regard to Tesla. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and kick things off. G-Man was the second in. G-Man wanted to take a look at Apple. So let's move over and take a look at the Apple charts. In the case of Apple, what do we know about it? Well, geez, Apple on Friday also confirmed a weekly Gartley buy pattern. Let's just make sure of that. Let's draw on the A to B line out here, and we're just going to simply take that over to the C area just to give us that approximation. So there you go. So now we can see basically an A to B equals CD. Did they get down far enough really to complete that pattern? But we're going to call it close enough uh, for Stevie at this stage of the game out here. Price is inside its bullish structured weekly profile, G-Man. And I know your question is, will this run higher? Because of, I believe you've got some call positions on there. And in this case here, now, of course, this is a weekly position. When you do close above the center of a weekly bullet, when you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, it doesn't matter what time frame it is, odds favor that buyers are telling you and I that it has enough energy to make its way up to where the sellers reside. In that case, they're at 183.27. However, there is a potential detour. Now, detour is that weekly oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 180.79. Don't hold me to the 79 cents, but hold me till maybe the 181-ish area. And that's going to be really the next level of resistance. The reason I say that's the next level of resistance, because prices trade above its TD9 count breakdown resistance level on a daily time frame. And that was at 178.42. Now, what price is also doing, it's moving into a swing point that generated a TD9 count top. That's a swing point from October 12th. So that volume was 56 million shares. So far today, in just under two hours of trading, this has done 26 million shares. So price is moving into this swing point, G-Man, with volume. Now, I don't know where today's close is, neither do you, but if price does close above 179.04, and you're at 179 and change right now, if it closes above 179.04, it would appear to me that it's going to have the volume to close then inside that swing point and then suggest when you close inside a swing point with volume, odds increase that price is going to go ahead and make its way up to the top of that uh, swing point. That's one element to consider. Another is, is Apple forming an A to B equals CD upside pattern as we speak right now? Why do we say that, Stevie? We say that because price is trading above the swing point from November the 2nd. And November the 2nd swing point did volume of 77 million shares. As I think I mentioned, we've already done 27 million shares today. Now, 27 million, we just multiply times three. That gets us to about 77 or so. So it has similar type volume uh, to that swing point, And that could be setting up an A to B equals C to the upside. So let's go ahead and draw that pattern in here. As we draw this pattern in here, we can go from A to B. And I'm just simply going to go ahead and move this to the C to D leg. Now, what I'll do, just so I can give you an accurate number out here, is I'm going to go ahead and do this on my black background chart. I'm not going to change the screens. Why? Because Stevie oftentimes forget to change it back. And then I do a big review, and everybody's saying, what the Sam heck, maybe not heck, is that guy talking about? So the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection, which will be the initial price target area, is up at 185.46. But this retracement, this one-day retracement, this B to C leg, was 37%, so a 0.382 retracement. 
when an instrument does a 0.382 retracement on that B to C leg, there is a better than 40% chance that this is going to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D move. Now, where that one-to-one 0.272, that's the next Fibonacci expansion level that Stevie uses, and that's at the 188.75 level. Now, it turns out that at 183.27 is the top of that profile. So although I'm not using short language here, and we're telling the story of what the charts are telling you and I, what we see right now, at least on the daily and the weekly time frame out here, G-Man, if you've got some time, hold on to those positions. Now, if we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, what we don't have as we speak at this moment in time at 1126 is any kind of topping pattern. A bearish reversal candle on a 30-minute basis would change that. But we're not seeing any kind of a sell signal when we take a look at Apple, even on its 30-minute chart out here. Hope that helps you out, G-Man. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Ord joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his bold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. A gold report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
welcome back, folks. Still a mixed bag out there. The Dow's up 35, S&P's up 6, NASDAQ 144, Russell's down 20, Semi's off 16, Tranny's down 111 points. Let's go to our next chart out here. Uh, this one is coming from ELO, Electric Light Orchestra. What a great uh, band, what a great group that is, especially the leader of that band. And I want to take a look at Mosaic out here. So let's take a look at Mosaic. Right now, trading out at about 33.05. Let me just make sure. This one looks like it might have a little bit of a delay on it. And uh, yeah, 32.98 is where Mosaic is uh, printing right now. So what do we know about Mosaic? We know Mosaic formed a TD9 count bottom on its daily time frame. We also know that price was trading below a slightly bearish. Uh, you know, I'm not going to really call that a bearish structured profile. Okay. All right. So we got that. What did price do? Price got inside the profile. It tested and rejected that center line. Would have more meaning if it was really a bullish structured profile out there. But when I take a look at that, it'd be pretty disingenuous to say that was the case out there. And Stevie is not a disingenuous lad. So we take a look at it right now. If price closes the day below 3307 ELO, 3307 is the oscillator and change line, and it's red. If it closes below that, odds favor it's going to make its way back to that TD9 count bottom. Maybe. Why maybe, Steve-O? Well, because so far, price has tested the top of that swing point. So that TD9 count bottom is also a swing. That is from November the 1st out there. And if we take a look at that swing point, that volume there was 3.4 million shares. Now, this is on 1.1 today. We multiply that times three. That gets us to about 3.3 or so. So it's going to be close from a volume standpoint. But if it does test and reject, it's already tested. The rejection would require a close above 3274, which it's doing right now. And it can do that with less than 34 million shares. Then it's telling us it doesn't really have enough sellers to bust price to the downside out there. But you can clearly see out here, ELO, the resistance levels. 3346, the bottom of its profile, 3390. If we look at that weekly time frame chart out here, what do we know? We know that there's a TD9 count bottom, and that TD9 count bottom would be negated this week with a close below 3309. We're trading at 3298. It's more important. Where is it trading? Now, if we take a look at swing points from a weekly standpoint, the swing would take us back to June 2nd. And that swing point had volume of 24 million shares. And last week, as price was moving into that, it was with 19 million shares. Now, it did close inside there. When it closed inside a swing point with volume, we would say with certainty, although there's not absolute certainty, but we would certainly say with certainty in our voices that price is going to go down and test that low. When it gets down there on lighter volume, as it did last week, then we really don't know. But that is still open. So that is game out here. Which one is going to tell us the signal? Is it the weekly? Is it the uh, daily? Well, as long as price remains below resistance levels, then I'd say the weekly is more likely the one that's going to give us that message out here. So with regard to Mosaic, as we speak right now, it could be a test rejection of the low saying we don't have enough sellers just yet. The weekly chart is saying I may beg to differ to differ out there. But I'm, what I'm not seeing here, so is it a buy point? Is it a buy and I would have to say, even though we've got that daily TD9 count, I'd say it's uh, it's risky. It's real risky because you had price close inside that swing point last week on the weekly basis. And as long as price remains below that or inside that swing point, that might today right now might not be the best buy point. So, ELO, I hope that that helps you out. And I uh, thank you so much for the request. Now, Pat uh, writes in and Pat asks, what time is Apogee today? And to answer that question, Pat, it's exactly at 1658. Now, Apogee, folks, is the point in time when the moon is the furthest from Earth. There's two points in time that are measured out here. There's the perigee. That's when uh, the moon is closest to Earth. How do you remember perigee is closest and apogee is furthest? Well, one, you could just memorize it. Or, you know, one is closer and one is further, right? That's the easy way. And it turns out you just got to remember that it's the opposite. So if it's apogee, letter A, that's the further one. Versus perigee, it's further out, that becomes the closer one. At least that's how Stevie remembers it. But that doesn't matter. The question is, what time is it? And what relevance does that have? Turns out, you know the Rhodes Mintum indicator pattern that uh, Stevie uses out here? It's a great pattern, right? If we take a look at that pattern, leave these charts up. We can just simply go take a look at the... Uh, 
at the daily equity future contracts out here. Not only do we have some TD9 count bottoms, but we've got some roads momentum indicator signals as well. So really a great tool. I discovered the Perigee and Apogee when I digitized the New American Ephemeris. The New American Ephemeris tells you every data point that you need between not just lunar aspects, but uh, about planetary aspects as well. And what I did when I had uh, digitized that, it allowed me to write a program. I didn't write it, but I heard somebody write it. And what it does, it, what it did is it allowed me to map out each and every data point to see if there was consistency. Was every Venus retrograde a high or a low out there? Well, it turned out the one pattern that I found that was most consistent was perigee and apogee. In the case of perigee and apogee, we use those as data points. We use the exact moment in time if the market is trading at that time. Turns out at 1658, that is going to be two minutes to five. You still have the ES, the NQ, the YM that are trading out there. And so, but what you can use for those of you that are at home, you can just use today's close at five o'clock for the equity future contracts. And again, you can take, so, or, or the open. So when we're, but, but because the market is trading, that really becomes the data point. So, so Ron, the, our path, the answer to your question, Apogee today comes in at 1658. You want to note those on your charts out there because they can, they don't always, but oftentimes, let me just give you an example. Let me just switch panels. Hopefully I'll remember to go back to the uh, white background charts as we resume our regular scheduled programming out here. Just kidding you. And if we take a look at this, if you look at the uh, data point here is take a look at gold, for example, and here's the perigee. Here's the last perigee pivot point out there. It comes in at 1994.90. Now, why has this been acting as resistance? Now, I can't tell you why. I think I know why, but I'm not going to share why because it doesn't really matter because I can't prove it. But I know that it works. And so when price is up at a apogee or perigee pivot point, whether it's testing a support or resistance, it's going to release information to us. If you take a look at Natch, at the NQ out here, take a look at NQ. It's a perigee pivot point was 14.3, 14.50. Look at how many times price came down and tested and that level held. I guarantee you that was that that was there, there was no sweat. There was no nothing out there that would have told any trader, I don't care what technical tools you might have, that these data points were the data points that were key for understanding support or resistance out there. And that's the reason that Pat is asking that question out there. So I hope that helps you out, Pat. And thanks so much for the question. Let's go on to our next request out here. This one is coming in from Ron. Ron wanted to take a look at the Russell 2000. And when we take a look at the Russell 2000 out here, what do we know? Well, first of all, we know that on a daily time frame, price wants to go target eventually the 1800.90 level. At 1800.90, what is that? That's its TD9 count breakdown resistance area. However, before oh I didn't I didn't show you that I'm gonna well I, I'm gonna I'll switch back and forth here's the old switcheroo where it's just uh, unfortunately with this software I don't know which screen that I'm on I haven't been able to really nail that one down but let me just switch over here and that's why occasionally you know I make that mistake but when we take a look at the Russell 2000 the level that I'm saying that it eventually wants to get up to is 1800.90 however. There's detour signs all over the place. And now if we go back to those black background charts out here, and you saw them as I had punched this up on the chart, you've got a descending trend line. And that descending trend line, those are the levels that price needs to be able to close above to tell us that it wants to make that move to 1800.90. We get back from this break, we're gonna go ahead and give Ron additional data points for him to be able to pay attention to for the remainder of the day. To help him and you and I understand what's Russell 2000 communicating to us. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the Russell 2000. We're doing this for Ron inside the Tiger's Den. And what we've got up on our screen right now, what we're going to have up on our screen here momentarily, is that white background chart. And we're looking at the consecutive days higher and lower. So the black digits are consecutive moves higher, red digits consecutive moves lower. When I say consecutive moves, I'm referring to close below close or close above close. In this case here for the Russell 2000, Friday was day number five of consecutive moves higher. Last time we had a day of five consecutive moves higher, what do we have? We had a pullback of three consecutive sessions. So what we expect here, what Ron should expect, what I should expect, what you should expect, is at least a two to three bar or two to three day pullback here inside of the Russell 2000. How do we know if that's really going to unfold out here? Well, we need to see key levels of support fail. The next key level of support that I see on my screen out here comes from the five hour time frame chart. And that five hour time frame chart shows that prices back has tested support, which is at 1744. I'm not gonna round it up down, 1744. So the next level, Ron, that you should be watching is 1744. If price closes below that, especially on a five hour time frame out there, that's gonna suggest a further retracement. In the case of the 240-minute chart, and here I don't exactly have a top. I mean, I don't, maybe there's an A to B equals CD. I'm not going to worry about that. What I'm going to worry about is support. What's the level of support that has to be broken to suggest a further move lower? 1745.60. So you want to watch 1745.60 as well. When I looked at time frames that do have tops out here, that would be the 30-minute and the 60-minute uh, charts as well. So if you take a look at those, here's your 30-minute Rosemontum indicator top. Then here's your TD9 count top. We have price breaking through breakout support at 1765.30. So odds favor, Ron, that if those larger time frames give way, where price is likely headed to, this was like the 1744-ish area, my recollection, that price will likely target 1721.20. 1721 is the next 30-minute TD9 count breakout support level. So that's what I see when I take a look at those. If I look at the intraday charts out here, the 15 and the 10, even more intraday, uh, we've got roads to indicator signals. Those need bullish reversal candles to confirm a bottom. We don't have that just yet. So if you want to get real granular, 
Watch those 10 and 15 minute time frame charts. See if you get a bullish reversal candle. That would then lead to some type of a bounce out here. But I'd pay attention really to the to the five hour time frame chart. A large time frame out there with a key area of support that if price closes below, tells us the momentum is gone and that we should expect a retracement and we should expect a two to three bar retracement out there. That would be pretty normal. So Ron, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Nancy wants to take a look at Microsoft. So let's switch over and take a look at the Microsoft chart out here. Is this it? It is not. Is this it? It is. Okay, good. So we take a look at Microsoft. So I believe Nancy is looking for some support or resistance levels. Okay. I give you resistance because you're trading above weekly resistance right now. That's the top of its weekly profile. So we're that's at 353.50. And Microsoft, excuse me, MSFT, last trade fired off at 356.59. So as long as price holds above 353.80, where might it go? The next area of resistance here, Nancy, is on a weekly basis is a TD nine count top. And the TD nine count top took place the week of July 21st. And that swing point high out here from Microsoft is up at the 366.78 area. That's the area to be looking at. Now, on a weekly basis, what happened? Microsoft at that swing point generated a volume of 228 million shares. And last week, it moved up into it and closed inside there with 119. So really light in the loafers. But being light in the loafers doesn't mean that it can't continue to move higher. Obviously, what we're seeing today. We take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. There's an A to B equal C to the upside. This is more than a one-to-one -one extension. So that would then also say, Nancy, that if we get a bearish reversal candle, then that would be the signal of a sell the D point pattern out there. And that would then indicate where the newer level of resistance is and that you're likely to see a pullback. But we don't have that as we speak right now. So that's not a call that we're willing to make out here. Price is trading above daily, weekly, monthly resistance out there and in fact, when we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart for Microsoft, what do we see out here? All we see is a road momentum indicator signal, but no bearish reversal candle. Price, for the most part, holding that green oscillator and change line. Microsoft's momentum is pretty strong as we speak right now to the upside. So things are looking pretty good. The caution with regard to Microsoft, how many consecutive days higher can this thing move? Today will be bar number seven or day number seven of a potential of a move consecutive move higher inside of um, Microsoft. The last time we got to seven days higher, Nancy, that was on January 17th. And what do we get there? We got that typical two day pullback. So much like we expect and anticipate in the market, much like we expect and anticipate in uh, even in Apple, I think it was even in Apple, um, in the case of Microsoft, and it should head higher, we should expect and anticipate a retracement. I've just not seen the signal just yet, but let's not be surprised when one starts and one begins out there. So I hope that helps you out, Nancy, with regard to Microsoft, with regard to support out here. All I can say is at this stage, your old resistance, still new resistance, really would become support. So at this stage here, I'd say it's 353.50. Below 353.50, I'd go to 351.89. And again, always thanks for the request out there. We've got a request from John C. inside the Tigers. Then wants to take a look at the 30-year Treasury, see what it is doing. So let's pull up those charts out there. And the 30-year Treasury is really just consolidating with inside its profile. At least that's what it was doing a few minutes ago. So the top of that profile, we can see this right now. Let's pull this back. Here's your daily time frame chart. What's at the bottom? Rhodes Mintum indicator signal was confirmed with this bullish piercing candle out there. Then what do we have? We have in the 30-year treasury, we have a bullish structured profile. Once price closed above it for two consecutive sessions, it was signaling to an eye that buyers were going to have the energy to push it up to the top of that profile. That's where the sellers were sitting. The sellers sat back and said, fire away. And as soon as price got up there, what did it do? The sellers unloaded. And now at this stage here, you just have a consolidation with inside that, that daily profile. That daily profile ranges anywhere from a support zone between 107.27 to 109.09 and a resistance zone up at the 113.19 level. Now that's the information coming from the daily time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart has a beautiful TD nine count bottom and price is above its red oscillator and change line. So this is suggesting, at least on a weekly basis, that this may have more legs to the upside. 
But at this stage here, whether it does or it doesn't, in order for it to have that, it's got to be able to close above the top of that daily profile for at least two consecutive sessions out there. So that's what you really want to be watching first. If price can do that, then it will go ahead and make that move on the weekly basis, the top of its weekly profile. And that number is 116.04. So it's worth writing on your pad of paper out there. But I think really, and on a monthly, but it's too early in the month. But a monthly basis rose meant to indicator signal triggered. And that says if you get a bullish reversal candle, price would go ahead and run up towards the 119-ish area. But right now, you've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside those profile levels. What are the charts for the uh, TLT showing us? Not sure, but we've got about 15 seconds. Steve is going to try to get back to those charts so we can pop those up on the screen out here just uh, for blanks and giggles. And as we take a look at the TLT, you know, Again, totally different meaning in its chart patterns out here. Profile levels are forming today below price. That's normally a bullish signal out there. Really for the TLT, get your news from the 30-year treasury. You don't have to trade it, but you certainly want access to its patterns so you can chart out what it's communicating to you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Moore joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
Welcome back, folks. A couple more questions. We'll take a look at the NQs out here. XPEV, this is XPing Inc. Uh, it is uh, trading right in resistance. The question was, where's resistance? Right here, where we're at right now. 1768. The price can close above 1768. Then the next resistance level is up at 2049, 20 or 2040. And 2040 would be the top of its uh, monthly profile out there. Price is trading above its weekly profile, so that's a bullish outcome. It's really the daily that you've got to contend with here. And 1768 is resistance until proven otherwise price could even start pulling back into the 1545 ish type area out there that's not the message that we have at this moment out here this had uh, three consecutive moves to the upside so a pullback for a couple of days may be in order here as well the next request was a take look at bbai that was for whoa what the heck happened there uh that is a great question what in the heck did i actually uh, touch to make these charts pop up on the screen. And I don't know the answer to that, but I'm uh, kind of held hostage here because, well, let me get to where it is I need to go. And these are old charts out here, so we don't really care about these just much, th that much. But let's take a look at this. There we go. Now, let's go back to BBAI. BBAB, BBAI has been on fire form, that beautiful TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And then what's price doing? Well, it simply took out all kinds of resistance, profile resistance, breakdown resistance. Where's the next resistance? resistance level that's the question it happens to be the top of its weekly profile dan the top of that profile is at a buck 67 so that's where the next battle is at right now this is trading out at what 159 so 167 if you can get above that then 223 becomes its price target and 223 is the weekly td9 count breakdown resistance level so i hope that helps you out and let's go finish off the show by take a look at the nq out here in the case of the nq it wants to target 15309 this is uh, i don't know five or six uh, consecutive six uh, consecutive sessions to the upside maybe this will be number seven out here that's suggesting that it wants to it, it, it should pull back well on a five-hour time frame chart watch 15 to 28.50 that's a td9 count top Pro folks if price closes above that on a five-hour basis the next one uh, comes in at 2 p.m is my recollection no yeah 2 p.m Price close is trading above that, close about 15, 50. There's still more legs. There's still more rally inside the NQ with 15, 309 being the price target. To the downside, I would watch 15, 182, 50. A close below that says we may have started that two or three day retracement. Folks, have a magnificent Monday. I'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Take care.